everyone and welcome yourselves back to the channel and here we are to talk about arguably one of the most anticipated films of the year you know all the build up how incredible the trilogy was prior to this today's film is john wick chapter four and my god when i say you have to go and watch this film i mean you have to go and watch this film it's on for like two hours and 45 minutes um Mr. Bill Skarsgård uh, makes his debut as the villain. <clears throat> we we get Kane, who's an incredible character in this. Kanye Reeves embodies John Wick once again in probably his best performance ever. And then we got all the other stuff that comes along with it. But of course, spoilers ahead, subscribe if you are new and you obviously enjoy the videos, leave a like. Be sure to let me know down below in the comments if you enjoyed the fourth John Wick. And of course, I'll be sure to do the trilogy at some point. So do stay tuned for that, of course. And of course, enjoy the video and leave any suggestions down below. Shazam, Fury of the Gods and Dungeons and Dragons are coming very soon. Look forward to them. Enjoy the video. So, John Wick, fourth chapter, upcoming TV show and ballerina. It's made quite the word of it is dominated the action world in, in many ways um you know you think of what die hard did for the uh, action world what liam neeson has done what steven seagal has done but what kanye has done uh, in these films and what he did for matrix he's got better <clears throat> with age he captivated his performance incredibly in this you know the directing the writing the, the settings the violence everything was just perfectly captivated in this two hour 45 minute film um ian mcshane as winston i think you know he was obviously in it for a massive amount of time but the scenes he appeared in he was so impactful his relationship with john over these four films the relationship they've had Obviously, because he was shot off the build in the last one, and obviously we picked up multiple months after, their relationship is as strong as ever. <clears throat> and by the end of the film, it's even more solid because the possibility of John being dead or alive is up in the air, which I loved about the ending. But of course, I love the opening from the whole desert scene where he kills this one guy, and then Skarsgård becomes like this sort of new leader that's working with um the main the main table of people. Um you know the continent was destroyed the, the, the continent in japan that was an, that was the best scene in the film which lasted over but it, it went on for a very long time where we saw shimazu um we saw kane we saw wick we saw shimazu's daughter we saw all these people taking millions of amounts of bullets sword fights um, the fight scene in the, in the nightclub later in the film where you have Mr. Nobody, Kane, John Wick against the big dude who is, I mean, it was incredible because when you saw him, you, I, I, I initially was like, he's going to be an incredible fighter. And then when he boots John over the balcony and um, that's what I'm saying, the, these scenes, there was just oh, every fight scene, there was elements of, <clears throat> is John actually going to get out of this? You know, he did the first fight scene in Japan. Um, well, he did the fight scene in the opening sequence. Then he had the fight scene in Japan. Then he had the fight sequence in Berlin. And then he had the fight sequence in Paris, near the Burj Khalifa, um, on the road. And when he has to avoid all these cars. And then this annoying assassin dude who works for Bill Skarsgård's character. He's basically the highlighted villain of the film. And when he eventually dies, you're so pleased because he had, he was like the Terminator. And that scene where he chucks John down two, well, like four, like eight flights of stairs. And <laughs> it was this whole build up of him beating all these people to be knocked all the way down to then redo it, but do it with Kane. The relationship between himself and Kane in this film is brilliant. It's perfect. It is executed so well. Kane is the best character in the film who isn't John. <clears throat> um, uh, Lance Reddick, Reddick obviously passed away in real life. And actually, thankfully for his character in this, they kill him off. So, weirdly enough, it went hand in hand. Obviously, we'd obviously love to have Lance here with us. We'd obviously preferred if his character wasn't dead. But it's 
I don't know if they knew something in the real world. Um, I don't know if they'd always had it planned, but it obviously fit the tone of the film, him not being there, and obviously Winston wanting revenge against uh, Marches, who is Bill Skarsgård's character name. Uh, the king, obviously, he played his role as good as ever. Wasn't obviously there massively, but what he did was good enough, I think, for me myself. The mix of characters, the mix of point of views and perspectives. You know, when John saved Mr. Nobody's dog, it was a massive throwback to the first film. He knew losing a dog could could lead a man on a, ba- on a bad path. You know, the face-off at the end between himself and Kane, which obviously ended up with Skarsgård being shot in the head and John taking too much of a blood loss. So we don't know if John's dead. We know Kane lives. We know Mr. Nobody lives. Um, but of course, Skarsgård and all his men have been killed. It was a terrific, terrific film that didn't feel like nearly three hours. It felt, it flowed perfectly. The fight sequences were choreographed to perfection. Like I said, some of the camera shots were absolutely mesmerizing, especially when they did the overlook shots of John going through room to room. Um, visually, it was stunning. That sunset shot towards the end was fantastic. As I said, as a conclusion of the possibility of John Wick never coming back, it's a perfect ending because it's open-ended. You can end it with the fact that John's dead, or you can bring it back for a fifth film with John being a free man and being alive. But as far as the King and Winston are aware, John is dead. But obviously, I think I believe Winston knows that John isn't dead. But I think there was a moment where I was like, this is boring, or, you know... There was moments where maybe this for the fight scenes were going on too long, but it was purposeful. It it made a lot of sense and it drove the film forward so much. My only quarrel with the film is I hope I hope and wished Skarsgård was a bit more hands on <clears throat> because it felt like he could you know shoot somebody or kill somebody. The only thing he did was stab Mister Nobody's hand and then attempt to kill Wick at the end. But ultimately, he was put off by his arrogance and his sure naivety. Um, but um, I was, I was even. I think I was even more surprised. <laughs> I think with the di- disappointment of Scream Six and Creed, I think I was worried about this one. But ultimately, this is currently the best film of the year. One of the finest action films in years. Kanye's best performance. Skarsgård proves he is one of the most diverse actors at the moment. Obviously, playing Pennywise a few years back, and you know. The rest of the cast is just immense. You know, I think obviously you've got people from like Mortal Kombat, which I think Shimazu was from Mortal Kombat playing Scorpion, I believe. Don't ha- don't hold me to that. Uh, I think Donnie Yen was from Star Wars Rogue One. Um, uh, yeah, you just have an incredible, incredible cast, and obviously Lawrence Fishburne is a fantastic actor in his own right. But ultimately, John Wick Chapter Four is simply perfect. I'm going to overlook Skarsgård because his role was very good still. I just wanted a bit more from him. There's nothing where I'd go. This was too long. It dragged out. Everything had a meaningful moment. The plot drove it to a good place. From Paris to Berlin to New York, it all worked excellently. From dialogue, acting, and casting, perfectly put together and for a perfect 10 out of 10. could argue... It is what an action film should be, should look like, and could easily be cast categori- categorically um, known as a masterpiece, if you will. Not going to call it a masterpiece, because maybe I need to watch it one more time, but I think it, for the time being, it is a perfect 10 out of 10. No quarrels, no issues. Go check it out for yourself. Uh, and obviously, rest in peace to Lance Reddick, who delivered a fantastic performance over the four films. He was only a short time for this point, but I think he was always an, a genuinely great character with great relationships and great moments. So I'm excited to see him in Ballerina and his other performances going forward. So stick around for more. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed John Wick Chapter 4 as much as I did. I'll be back with more reviews very soon. Until next time, goodbye. Mm-hmm.